you could go anywhere in the world right now, where would you go? I'm dreaming, well, I'm dreaming about you. I'm dreaming, I hate being without you. I'm dreaming, are you dreaming about me too? So when my mom suggested that we take a spontaneous detour to Japan, there was only one right answer. Oh my god, yes, let's freaking go, followed by lots of screaming. And as a result, we did very minimal research for this trip. And when I say minimal, I mean zero. Unable. Credit card didn't work either. Let's see. Credit card didn't work either. Oh, it worked. What? I don't know. It's $60, $9. There we go. That's more like it. We did it! Yes. The public transit in Japan is incredibly superior to all the places I've ever traveled to. They can basically bullet you anywhere you wish to go in Japan. Super fast, convenient, and confusing for someone who comes from a little town with like three bus lines in the entire city. We're lost. My friend is Isn't that crazy? And because I got us lost for four hours on the subway, we were eating a slightly later dinner at 11 p.m. at none other than the infamous Ichiran Ramen in Shibuya. And apparently every other tourist also decided to get lost and eat dinner now because we waited around two hours before we ordered on this vending machine that spits out oh, your oh, meal oh. tickets. Oh my god. At this point, I wasn't just hangry, okay? I was a irritated, overheated, exhausted monster, which was perfect because at this restaurant, everyone gets a little booth to themselves. So it's just you and your ramen. You can give this lovely bowl your full undivided attention. Honestly, I wish more restaurants were like this. Yay, welcome to Tokyo. No, we're crazy, bro. The noodles were thin and a little bouncy. And while my mom does make better eggs than them, the tonkatsu broth tasted like pure sunshine yeah. and happiness. And it was rich, but not too overwhelming and had a delicious umami flavor. It was the best ramen I've ever had outside of Canada, and it was 100% without a doubt the worst bowl of ramen I ate on this entire trip. Everything is so perfect. Our mission for today, omakase sushi, which of course we needed to wait for. So while we waited, we waited some more in a different line we randomly spotted. And this was one of those moments where I have no choice but to believe in destiny because these cookie makers truly changed our lives today. I think there are two locations in Tokyo, but I don't know what it's called because I can't read Japanese, but that doesn't matter because the magic is in these little buttery, crunchy wheat cookie squares. Just smelling it, guys, brought me pure joy. <laughs> Stop just smelling it. Each bite honestly made me kind of sad because I didn't want it to end. I really tried to savor every bite and moment of this trip because this is gonna be my last trip before my senior year of college, or in other words, when papers, deadlines, and exams take over my life, which also means, as crazy as it is to comprehend, this is my final back to school shopping season ever in my existence. So I was gonna make this one count. Every year it's become a little tradition of mine to do my back to school clothing shopping on ThreadUp, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Okay, like, I freaking love ThreadUp. It's an online consignment and thrift store and it's just so fun to shop on their website. They literally have all of my favorite brands. Dress shirts are like my staple back to school item. If you ever see me on campus, it's very likely this is what I'm gonna be wearing. This oversized dress shirt is originally from Princess Polly and it's estimated retail price is $95 and I got it on ThreadUp for $17.99. This little black tank top is from Sunday Best and it's estimated retail price is around $35 and I also got it on ThreadUp for $17.99. This is like the perfect fall knit sweater. If you guys have been around long enough on this channel, you'll know that I used to work at Aritzia. It was um slightly an unhealthy addiction, but I do no longer shop there because I prefer shopping on ThreadUp. Like, look at this cute weird long sleeve top from Babaton. It still has the tags on them. I just feel like it's more sustainable and it saves me so much money. Dress pants are my weakness. Yeah, I'm not proud to admit how many I've owned. And I found these gray ones that are from Sunday Best. They're so cute and comfy. They retail for $110 and I got them for $40.99 on ThreadUp. I can just imagine myself wearing this outfit with my little backpack walking across campus. Anyways, if any of the pieces you saw in this video 
caught your eye. You can actually shop similar pieces if you use the link in my description. And use code LINDA for 40% off your first order. Thank you, Thredo. She's too cute. Now onto the main event of the day, sushi at Ginza Kayube. Several articles inform me that this sushi restaurant first opened in 1935 and is one of the best sushi restaurants in Tokyo. That's insane. And I was also insanely intimidated. My mouth did not feel worthy, but you can definitely taste the sushi talent, the quality of the ingredients, the love infused in each and every gorgeous sushi. You cannot find fresher, fishier seafood. And watching the chef is a performance in itself. You can basically see the skill and passion radiate off his every move. He mainly only spoke Japanese, but also spoke a little bit of Chinese, which shocked me. <laughs> he said he knows the names of almost every fish in basically every language, and I'm not surprised. Everything we ate in Japan was like a work of art, whether it literally looked like art or the flavors emotionally moved us in the way that art does. I actually did tear up sometimes. You can just taste how much time and devotion they put into the things they serve you here. Every bite was beauty. Oh, 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 <laughs> Potato chips from Muji. They're like Japanese yam. Wow. That's so yummy. Dinner time was officially renamed lineup time. We quickly realized only 20% of our trip was gonna be eating and the other 80% was gonna be waiting in lines. Oh no. Honestly, I didn't hate that. I swear it made the food taste better and it was a nice way to take a break, chat with my mom, and if I was lucky, I sometimes even made a friend. This, again, was one of those meant to be moments. The person who lined up behind me was actually a subscriber. Hi Michelle, if you're watching. And we just didn't stop talking and it made the hour and a half lineup feel like five minutes. This was my first ever steaming or dipping ramen noodle experience. It's cold noodles and served in a separate bowl. There's dipping broth that's hot, rich, decadent, savory, and there's almost a little hint of sweetness. You just pluck a few ramen noodles up with your chopsticks, dunk it into the sauce, and slurp it up, and each slurp is packed with umami goodness. It was incredible. So my posts are really, 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 really delayed. So I went and I did all the traveling, and then I went home, and then I started posting. So everyone thinks I'm like still in Singapore, but it's yeah, funny because I, I am. Everything about this night to me was so memorable and so surreal. The ramen, the conversation, the beautiful chashou meat, just being in Japan, it's so crazy to me. Anytime I meet you guys in the real world, it never feels real, but always makes me feel so full. It's almost like I have friends all over the world. look up and we're just watching cats. <laughs> this is our last full day in Tokyo. Going to do some shopping, eating, matcha ice creaming, more eating. We're starting off with this. Ooh la la. Mmm, bite it. Mmm, oh my god. Mmm. Oh my god. This is so good. Because of these cookies? I knew I at least had to have one Japanese eel and rice experience. We came to this restaurant and they gave us this sheet of directions on how to properly eat it, but I'm pretty sure they used Google Translate because... A blue pariah and Welsh onion seaweed about the following when the horseradish is put a little, it is delicious. What? Miso soup. Bowl. 
Oh, we're confused. We don't know how to eat it. So the language barrier, of course, was expected, but I didn't expect how lost I would actually feel and how many times I would literally get lost. Google Maps and Google Translate, thank you for saving my life. But I mean, everyone was super nice and patient and tried their best to help us. But yeah, after 15 minutes of trying to figure this out, we just gave up and decided to eat it wrong. And even wrong, it was still like the best unagi I've ever had. Uh-oh. They love their jellies here. <laughs> Reminds me of my childhood. Dessert, as always, was calling, and we wanted to try out this place with seven different levels of matcha ice cream, and then they told us it was gonna be a two and a half hour wait. So we spent the waiting time sweating nonstop while getting devoured by a sea of humans and getting a little pre-matcha ice cream matcha drink. And it's gonna sound dramatic, but I promise you, this black sesame ice cream deserves dramatic. My mouth will never be the same. I don't think any black sesame ice cream will ever compare the strongest, yummiest, most divine black sesame flavor. And I guess, yeah, the matcha at this matcha ice cream place was pretty decent too. We then stumbled across this peaceful park and it was the most perfect getaway from the non-stop hustle and bustle that is Tokyo. I didn't always, but I love moments filled with simple, sweet nothingness. Moments where there is nothing to do and nowhere to be and nothing to prove. You just are. Oh no. Ah. 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 Doubt. Ah, I've always weirdly felt like I was on this timeline. Like no matter how much I did, it was never enough. And I was somehow always behind. But seriously, everyone is in their own time zone. So that kind of means you're always on time. This mindset really clicked into place this past year on my travels. I met people who are 50 and solo traveling for the first time. I met 35 year olds going back to school. I met people at every age who are struggling and thriving and burnt out and rediscovering themselves. I thought it was so beautiful and inspiring seeing people at every stage of life living their lives so differently. You're not behind. There's only where you are on the path that you're creating. To be behind would mean to be behind someone walking the same path as you. No one is walking the same path as you. Anyways, we got turned down by two restaurants before we found her. Rejection is a redirection to bigger and better and yummier things. This restaurant is proof of that. This place is famous for their dipping ramen noodles. You can just taste that they put their heart and souls into making this broth. It's an eight hour boil, then six hours of filtering, and then a whole day of letting it all marinate. Hands down, one of the most flavorful and best meals I had in Japan. The thickness of the noodles, the rich deep broth, of the melty meaty chunks, and the egg. I swear it was like glowing and infused with so much flavor and comfort. <laughs> Best purchase of Japan. These chips and the cookies. <laughs> We started today off on the right foot with chips and cookies, but as we quickly learned, you can't expect to eat on Saturdays in Tokyo without a fight. Only the strongest people will triumph, and we were not one of those people. We got to the restaurant at 11, and the wait was for three hours, so we got into the virtual line, decided to go get some cookies while we waited, and then we canceled our spot in line to go eat at another restaurant, and then we discovered the wait was gonna be four hours, and then we got distracted by a couple of bakeries, and then got into another line for two hours, and by 3.30, we finally got seated. Looking back, we should have just stayed in the line at the first restaurant. It literally says Fox. And I gotta say, I'm so glad you weren't there with me that day. I am seriously the worst version of myself when I haven't been fed enough, but thank goodness this gigantic bowl of udon cured me of my moodiness. We've waited five hours to eat. I can't even believe that I used to be the exact opposite. I would feel so guilty and uncomfortable when I ate too much. I used to travel with my toxic friend, diet culture. I did leave her behind this time. And it's beyond liberating to be able to travel and not be anxious about food or my body. Hell, why am I orange? And to have so much freed up mental space to enjoy instead of overthink. I wanted to try these balls for so long. Are they sweet? Are they salty? 
Are they spicy? I love sweet chewy balls. They're so good, ma. On vacation and just life in general, it's so normal to find yourself eating more for pleasure than hunger. I know a lot of people say one meal will not make or break your health, but really one day, one week, or even several weeks of eating will not make or break your health. What you consistently eat over time is what matters. As in over the, I don't know, next 70 years of your life. And food isn't always about health. And health isn't only about what nutrients make up your food. It's also healthy to eat for the experience, the culture, the enjoyment, the comfort, the happiness it brings you instead of only eating for the nutrients, convenience, or energy. These are all different pieces of having a truly fully balanced relationship with food. You do not need to do any cleanse before or after a trip. The only detox you need is to detox from the food rules and restrictive thoughts. Cleanse yourself of all the toxic beliefs about good and bad foods and measuring your value based on your body. What I've always found was planning to diet or restrict when you get home tricks you into feeling like you're in control, but in reality, it would result in me feeling so out of control around food instead. This is how you're supposed to do it. Ooh, learn something new every day. Try to focus on having more compassion rather than more control. <laughs> Remind yourself no matter where you are, you always deserve food, rest, and enjoy yummy experiences to honor your hunger and your cravings. And sometimes you have cravings when you're not even hungry and that's okay. Sometimes you're not hungry or craving anything, but just want to try some yummy snacks and you deserve to do that too. You deserve a life where you can live and go on vacation and out with friends and not have food and calories and your body at the center of it all. Are we gonna climb these stairs? Oh, I'm sticky. Let's go. Grab a cup of coffee, pour it over ice. Take it for a walk while we talk about our lives. I just wanna spend some quality time. Boy, I wish I got yours. I stumbled across this restaurant on Google Maps and decided I was not leaving Kyoto without eating here. Famous for their Michelin recommended ramen and their super duper long lines. The trick is to arrive around a good hour before opening time. Cameras are not welcome, but you guys need to see this. There are 16 seats and 100 people waiting to experience this bowl of magic. We started off with shomai that were super soft and glutinous and flavorful along with a tofu scallop rice bowl that was perfection. And then the star of the show, a Wagyu beef ramen with dark soy sauce broth. You can pick between white soy sauce and dark soy sauce and I contemplated between the two for like 45 minutes but they recommended we get the dark soy sauce with the Wagyu and it was 3,000% worth the wait. A meal that I will never ever 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 forget. <laughs> Oh no, crackle. Oh no, oh no. Oh, my I spent the next two hours transferring all the videos and pictures I took onto my other phone just in case this one decided to die on me. On the bright side, it wasn't completely dead and I got to save what really mattered, the memories and the photos of the food. Oh my goodness, I love you. Are you guys related? I'm taking a nap. I don't talk about my fear foods a lot. I don't really have any anymore, but some are a little cheeky and like to resurface from time to time. So I thought I'd share this little win of mine. I've never been a big drinks drinker, like not big on smoothies, Starbucks, or even boba. It's just not something I've ever craved growing up. So it was easy to never drink them when the world turned me against liquid calories. So I didn't even realize it turned into a fear over the years. This will only make sense if you've struggled with fear foods, but for years, like I think over a decade, I've always chosen water and sugar-free energy drinks and black coffee, while bubble tea and Starbucks gave me like mini panic attacks. But over the past year, I've been drinking matcha lattes, adding milk and sugar into my coffees, and ordering the sweet drinks at cafes if that's what I feel like having. And I genuinely truly love my water, but I can't explain how good it feels to go to a cafe and order a drink without overthinking and just enjoying it. These seemingly normal looking moments are actually huge milestones and deserve to be celebrated. And I just hope you take a moment to reflect and see just how far you've come and remind yourself that it hasn't been easy, but you did it. And I'm so proud of you. I got a new camera!
On this trip, I was constantly Googling and thinking about food, but not in a way that takes away from my life or because I'm trying to control how my body looks. I just love eating the best food when I travel. My food obsession now comes from a place of enjoyment and happiness and a ramen addiction. Your mindset around food changes everything about food. It used to be me against my body and now I'm grateful for my body and I want to experience more, not be less. I'm here in this beautiful place with the yummiest food for eight days. I have like 250,000 other days to eat a nourished, balanced diet. Let me have these eight short little days to nourish my soul instead. On our last day in Kyoto, we decided we felt incomplete without one more taste of this beautiful ramen. And I am so glad we did because we got to try the famous white soy sauce broth and it was an unexplainable culinary adventure. It felt like an honor being able to eat her. And this Wagyu rice bowl, guys, I don't need to say anything, but that this was the best thing I had in Japan. I know it's hard to believe, but yes, it was just that good. We then found the seven matcha ice cream flavored store in Kyoto and there was no wait. And I reconfirmed that no, I was not exaggerating about this black sesame ice cream being life altering. In Kyoto, we had lots of fun on a ice cream, lots of ramen, lots of sweating, a lot of waiting in line. I tell you, I don't think you believe how long I've this way. I'm begging you to stay. If I could show you, I'd hope that you could see All the possibilities, there could be a place where you met me Slimy. Oh, whoa, this is a large flop. Hut, hut, hut. How do you know? As you can tell, we ate a lot of ramen on our trip to Japan and I absolutely loved seeing all the different styles and unique spins on my favorite food. We found this ramen shop that I feel like is a completely hidden gem in Osaka for only 10 bucks. This may have been the absolute best ramen I've ever had in my life. They have a guinea fowl based broth that's absolutely delectable, light and refreshing yet so luscious and full of umami with hints of yuzu, which is a fruit that tastes a little lemony and tart. And the charred meat slices are soft and so juicy and the bamboo shoots are tender and I have no clue what they did to that egg but it was ooey and gooey and made me feel bad for like all the other eggs in the world. I get so absorbed into my ramen that it's like I don't even remember eating it at the end. All I can say is so, so good. <laughs> She was always the right answer. Ooh. She's beautiful. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Creamy. Perfect sweetness. Ah. It's crazy. 
This ramen shop has two main choices, duck and shellfish ramen. We both got the duck ramen with slices of perfectly rare duck instead of the traditional pork, chewy yet delicate noodles, and the most flavorful, sweet, and salty broth. This was a ramen I missed before I even finished the bowl. Yes, I think this is the summer I turned into a professional ramen eater. It's insane how it feels like every bowl of ramen tops the next. Insane. But they're also so different it feels wrong to even compare them all. Like genuinely, they're all perfectly delicious in their own ways. It's almost like they all have their own personalities. From the thickness of the noodle, their different colored broth, the complexity of flavors, to all the little finer details. Like I wouldn't change a single thing about any of the ramens I ate. And just to be a little cheesy as we approach the end of this video, just like a bowl of ramen, you are all perfect and delicious in your own special ways. Moral of the story, you are just like a bowl of ramen to me. Clearly, it was proven on this trip that no, no, I cannot and never will get sick of eating only ramen, sushi, and matcha ice cream every single day for the rest of my life. This trip will forever hold a special place in my heart. Thank you, Japan, for feeding us. It was truly an honor. Until we meet again. The highlight of the trip. <laughs> my favorite part of Japan. <laughs> And just a reminder, you can totally shop my thread up pics using the link in my description and use the code LINDA for 40% off your first order.